Yo, what's going on guys? Mush back at it with another video. We have an in-depth blog post over at the PlayStation blog covering Ratchet & Clank Rift Apart's PC specs and specific PC features. Now, this gives us a lot of insight into various things. I already went through the system requirements themselves. I'll go over them again at the end of this video, but this is coming from the online community specialist at Nixus Software. Obviously, Nixus is the one that have been crushing it from a PC port standpoint, particularly uh, with their uh, with their excellent work on Spider-Man. That game was a tremendous port, but now we have another Insomniac game being ported over to PC with Ratchet & Clank Rift Apart, and the blog post notes, next week Ratchet & Clank Rift Apart is launching on PC. Many of you have asked for details about the technologies used and system requirements. Obviously, one of the key talking points has been the uh, hard drive requirement. No SSD um, is necessary, although it is highly recommended. Today, we are answering those questions, and on top of that, we have some exciting new feature announcements. To ensure a smooth dimension hopping experience, our team implemented Direct Storage 1.2 in Ratchet & Clank Rift Apart on PC including a GPU decompression. Richard Vanderlaan, senior lead programmer at Nixus Software, explains to enable quick loading and instant transition between dimensions, the game needs to be able to load assets quickly. Direct storage ensures quick loading time and GPU decompression is used at high graphics settings to stream assets in the background while playing. Traditionally, this decompression is handled by the CPU, but at a certain point, there is an advantage to letting the GPU handle this as this enables a higher bandwidth for streaming assets from storage to the graphics card. We use this to quickly load high-quality text and environments with a high level of detail. It was continued for Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart. We added adaptive streaming based on live measurement of the available hardware bandwidth. This allows us to tailor the texture streaming strategy for the best possible texture streaming on any configuration. With direct storage, the use of a fast NVMe SSD and GPU decompression, this results in a very responsive texture streaming and even at the highest settings. Direct storage is developed fully to utilize the speed of fast PCIe NVMe SSDs, but the technology is also compatible with SATA SSDs and even traditional hard disk drives. This means Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart on PC use the same technology for loading data regardless of the storage device in your system. I'm sure a lot of people are gonna like clown Sony even more now, but uh, you know, it is what it is. In our initial announcement, we shared that Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart on PC will feature ray trace reflections and newly added ray trace shadows for natural outdoor light. If you played Rift Apart on, um, on PlayStation 5, the best way to play that game was on the performance ray tracing setting because you're getting a pretty steady frame rate from my recollection and the game looked fantastic. So, well, hopefully, uh, with comp with decent specs, you can get a comparable experience to that at the very least. Today, we reveal the addition of another option that'll, uh, that will further enhance the realism of light in the game. Ray trace ambient inclusion with various quality levels to choose from. Graphics programmer Menno Bill explains ambient inclusion is a technique used in games to stim uh, to simulate how ambient lighting affects a scene. Ambient lighting is a form of indirect lighting. The light uh, reflected from other surfaces. This effect mostly appears at creases, cracks, and corners where surfaces are close to each other. Commonly used AO techniques are SSAO, that's Screen Space Ambient Occlusion, and HBAO Plus, Horizon-based ambient occlusion. These are not very demanding on the hardware, but they do not provide physically accurate results. RTAO utilizes ray tracing further to enhance the realism of ambient occlusion in the game. We have implemented RTAO as an addition for those with high-end systems with ray tracing compatible hardware and processing and power. Also implemented XEGTAO, Intel's implementation of ground truth ambient occlusion. Like the others, this solution is based on screen space, so that is something to consider as well. And obviously, there is a lot of variety in the system requirements. I really like, like, think of what you want with Sony. Some of their ports have been a little, a little bit sloppy, but, you know, especially Last of Us. But let's be real, like, you look at every major publisher, and given Sony's track record, it's more, like, they're one of the better ones when it comes to PC ports. Like, let's be, fr let's be frank here. As far as all the publishers in gaming, like, are you going to tell me EA is better than Sony? No. Like, I, I think Sony's got a leg up on uh, EA and, like, a lot of other publishers, and they've done a fairly good job. Like, Last of Us Part 1 is an abomin- was an abomination, I should add that. Was an abomination. But generally speaking, they do do a fairly good job. Returnal had some issues there, here and there, but you look at, you know, titles like Spider-Man, God of War, those have been really, really good. So, Rift Apart, minimum. This is 720p at 30 FPS, which is very, very key to clarify here because uh, that is the resolution you're going to play on a lot of these portable PC gaming platforms, 720p and likely 30 FPS. Graphic setting is very low, GTX 960, RX 470, i3 8100, or a Ryzen 3 3100, 8 gigs of RAM. Recommended is 1080 60 FPS. This is medium. Again, I love how Sony actually goes in depth and tells you that this is 1080p 60 FPS, medium settings. There we go. 
That's why, like, we need more tiers of system requirements, and I can appreciate when a publisher does this, and I'll always appreciate that. Uh, RTX 2060, RX 5700, Intel Core i5 8400, or a Ryzen 5 3600, 16 gigs of RAM, and then uh, Windows 10 uh, for both of those. And then, obviously, recommended is an SSD minimum. You can get away with a hard drive. Uh, hi, this is the third... Uh, the third tier, really the middle tier, as far as all of the uh, specifications go. This is 1440p, 60fps, or 4K at 30fps at high settings. Uh, RTX 3060 Ti or RX 6800, i5 11400, or a Ryzen 5 5600, and 16 gigs of RAM. And then there is the two ray tracing um, settings, which is nice that they have two different ones. Amazing ray tracing, this is 1440p at 60, 4K at 30, high ray tracing, high RTX 3070, i5 11600K, or a Ryzen 5 5600. X, 16 gigs of RAM and 75 gigs SSD space, then ultimate ray tracing is in fact 4K 60 FPS, like yeah, you gotta have a killer PC for that, because the thing is, like, it doesn't matter what marketing was used when the consoles were promoted, at the end of the day, how many games are doing 4K 60 FPS with ray tracing, it is a, <laughs> it is a minuscule amount, I think like maybe Devil May Cry 5 Special Edition is like one of the games that do it, and I, I, that game had a couple of different performance settings, but it's very, very rare to get 4K 60 with ray tracing, but if you want to do that, high ray tracing is at very high, uh, NVIDIA GeForce RTX 4080, i7-12700K, or a Ryzen 9 5900X, and 32 gigs of RAM. So there you go with all of the system requirements. What I am interested about is the graphics setting, like for high amazing ray tracing and ultimate ray tracing, it all specifies as high setting. So does this cap out at high? Because a lot of games, it's usually very low, low, medium, high, very high, and then ultra. That's like, generally speaking, that's what you see a lot as far as a breakdown um, on visual, uh, visuals and settings and whatnot. I'm sure this will have a pretty in-depth repertoire of different settings you can adjust. I mean, every Sony game has kind of had that even Last of Us, as bad of a port as it was, um, yeah, that's and it's a pretty good game now, by the way. Um, you know, that game has a decent bit of settings as well. Again, my standards for PC ports these days are so freaking low that, like, even with Sony having a colossal misfire with Last of Us, generally speaking, um, it's been pretty good. Uh, after playing, you know, the Hogwarts Legacies of the World and Star Wars Jedi Survivor, like, my expectations on PC ports can only be so high, and I just cross my fingers for something that's fairly good, and I do expect Nixus, again, they crushed it with Spider-Man, they crushed it with Miles Morales, and, uh, you know, God of War was great. Uh, Days Gone was really good. I never give Days Gone the love it deserves, but Days Gone was really good as well. Um, so yeah, there you go with that. That'll do it for me. Super excited for Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart. Obviously, the $60 price tag is going to push some people away, but guess what? The game's coming to PC. If you want to pick it up sometime down the line, maybe a year from now when it's sub 30 bucks, there's a lot of value in that as well. It's just nice to see um, a long-running franchise finally make its way over to PC. And like, you know... Ratchet and Clank isn't like Uncharted 4, I feel like. I think you can jump into Rift Apart without playing the other games. It would have been nice if the, uh, let's say the HD collection was ported to PC, but who knows? Maybe that'll happen at some point. Emulators do exist, guys, but that'll do it for me. Let me know all your thoughts in the comment section down below. As always, guys, thanks for watching, and I will catch you guys in the next one. Peace out. Hey, what's going on guys? Mush here again. Hope you enjoyed the video. As you guys might know, YouTube's notification system is sometimes a little bit wonky, even if you're subscribed to the channel. Maybe you're not abundantly aware that I uploaded a video to remedy that situation. Make sure you hit the bell notification button. This way, whenever I upload a new video and I try to upload as consistently as possible, you will be notified directly of the upload and you can watch it as soon as it goes live. I would really appreciate if you guys hit that button so you can stay up to date with all of the content I'm posting. But as always, guys, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace out.